I get that we're media. That's sort of the funnel we get put in because we have a podcast. We're on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. But we're really just huge Tiger guys. Right. And we just want to like get close to him and get near him and do videos with him and be a part of his world. And it took six, seven years. And then Taylor made the deal. That helps. And everyone at Taylor made has been so good about like, we've been floating. Like we want to get Tiger, like literally give us two minutes with him. That's going to make our whole entire year. So this Taylor made media day, this last one in October, they gave us time with him. And that's the video that came out of that. But Today's presenting sponsor doing an episode takeover of KFC Radio is Ted, the television series. It's the prequel to Ted and Ted 2, taking you back to 1993. 1993 is, like, maybe the perfect year. Yeah? It's a little bit early, maybe, like, 94, 5, 93 to 95 for me is, like, 8 years old to 10 years old, where, like, I probably, and this is it. Like, yeah, I'm going yeah. to school. I've got a, a, a teddy bear as a friend, and if I could have had him go through life with me literally and, like, go through puberty and become a man and have sex and do drugs and get in fights and go through school, ah, oh, I think this is right up my alley for nostalgia. It's set in 93, like I said. Um, Ted is, you know, he's had his, his moment of fame, his past, and now he's living with his best friend, uh, 16-year-old John Bennett. So, yeah, this is a little bit older. I'm t I was more like elementary school. So this is like high school years, John Bennett and Ted living in the uh, working class uh, Boston world uh, where he's hanging out with his parents and cousin. And Ted, as we know, is not exactly the best influence on John. I wish I had a teddy bear who was a bad influence on me. Because I, I, mean, I, I have not perfect. It would just be – I had someone be like, hey, it was his fault. Did you, did you have a thing? No. Never had a, a bear or a blanket or a thing. Nothing that survived longer than to like four years old. Like yeah, I'm yeah. sure I had things, right? right? right but like right. nothing I was ever weird about. Like I was like, I need this. I have, must have this. That yeah, like, explains a lot. <laughs> explains a lot. Well, hi. I don't know. You didn't have a thing. I had like I'm sure when I was a kid I had probably, things. That's probably why you are the way you are. You didn't have a thing. <laughs> gotta have a thing. Everyone's gotta have a Ted. John yeah. has his Ted because uh, Ted is willing to go out on a limb to help his friend and family. So Ted is streaming. On January 11th, only on Peacock. So sign up and start binging on the 11th. It is January 10th, 2024, meaning for 10 years and one day, Trent Ryan has been an employee of Barstool Sports. Clap it up for the big man. Uh, Clap it up for the big daddy. Thank you very much. 10-year anniversary was this week, the day that we are recording just mere hours ago. They dropped what I believe to be the greatest accomplishment in Barstool content history, a video with Tiger Woods. It's Trent Ryan Day, so the entire office is wearing the official Trent uniform, the black crew neck, and the khakis. He is the luggage man. He is, he is God bless you, he is Big Daddy. He is an honorary member of the St. Lunatics. Mm. He's got one of the greatest mug shots in history and one of the most successful golf podcasters to ever walk the planet Earth. That you're, it's very nice. It's, it's been an a incredible. Run. It's been a run. It has been ten years. I, you know, I know this place doesn't do a lot of like, like I remember you saying one time, Kevin. Like people who have only been here for like two years will be like, "It's my two year anniversary." It's my nineteen month anniversary. Yeah, yeah, which I never did any of that, but ten year felt like a big oh, enough a, one that's, where that's it was when like. You and you guys obviously have been here that long and even longer. It's like it's a lot of internet, man. <laughs> ten years. That's what I was thinking about. Like my brain has just been through 10 years of pure internet. I check Twitter a million times every day. Now I'm checking Instagram every day. I'm checking TikTok every day. Now we're getting big in YouTube. It's just a lot of internet over a decade. And I'm, you know, it's it's good to it's the best place to work in the world. 10 years I'm very I'm very happy and I hope to be here for the rest of my life. 10 years I think is where you start calling it a career. Oh, Anything. I think long before then. Yeah? Yeah. Really? I think I think at least I think at the latest 5 Maybe I'm wrong, but like I guess I, I guess I always considered my career because I knew it's what I wanted to do. And you were gonna guess, like you knew you were staying on it. I, yeah. I think most people, I guess most people bounce around even earlier than that. But if you told me like you, I feel like you would be like I've worked here for like seven years. But if you and then if you were there for ten years, you're like I have a career at X Y Z company. I don't know. It's 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 an arbitrary point, but I'm just saying you're at a point where it's like this is my career and it's obviously gonna be a lifelong what. Do you, did you have a moment where foreplay 
you probably knew you were going to do foreplay or golf content, like, as long as you're going to ride this thing to the wheels go off, right? For sure, yeah. But did you have a moment when you knew this is making so much money and is so popular and is at the forefront of golf and we are now talking with these people that, like, I will do this for as long as at least I want to, basically? I would say it was probably when we got the TaylorMade deal. That's a good one. That when it was like, sense. I mean, bef- it, before that, it was still doing well. Even when we dropped the teaser for the original podcast, it was just me and Riggs. That went really well. People were like, oh, awesome. Like an alternative golf media. Like that didn't really exist. Now it's right. now everywhere, everywhere and everybody's got a YouTube page. You guys page are the and- real godfathers, like the real trailblazers. I, I think shit. I've told you before. We've had golf guys on this show, comedians who also do golf stuff, and they're like, there, I can do what I do because of foreplay. Yeah, I think it would. People would have found it eventually. We just happened to be the first ones to do it. Yeah. Um, well, of course, well, but like, listen, people yeah. would have found America eventually. Christopher Columbus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's something to be said for being first. Uh, golf and the internet both existed for quite a long time before. You what a bad Riggs. example that was. I couldn't have picked a more third rail example. <laughs> oh, yeah. I actually, I disavow that example. No. Did you know about I, the Vikings or the early? Yeah. Uh... I, no, that, the TaylorMade deal, though, probably was the one where that was a big brand to jump into this world. And I think it took a little bit of convincing where it was like, obviously they have the Tigers and the Rorys and the Scotty Shefflers and the Tommy Fleetwoods. Our pitch was basically to, to be relevant for guys like that and i get that they're like having guys like that you have to have as a golf equipment company because it, it's pedigree it's like oh that's what sure. war uses whatever but for them to be relevant to a degree is like you got to play well in a golf tournament then you're on tv and if you win then you're getting all this publicity we were like we're relevant every day we we're doing a podcast we're doing two podcasts a week we're posting on twitter all the time it's like it sounds insane or did sound insane at the time where it's like, treat us like a tailor-made athlete and we are going to post every single day because our world is different than theirs. I also would venture to guess, and maybe I'm looking into it too much, but I'm thinking if I was a golfer and I watched Trent break 100 and then break 90 and like get better yep. with these clubs, I would probably be more inclined to be like, you know, just because I buy Rory McIlroy's clubs doesn't mean I'm going to play like him. True. But it's like, what did Trent do to get from 100 to 98? Like, he, he practiced and he worked and did it, but he also got these tailor-made clubs. You know what I mean? It would, it, there's, there's like a, a relatability to you guys. 100%. I think, is, I think we realized that after, like, once we started – we were further into the TaylorMade deal where it was like, yeah, I'm using more forgiving irons. I'm using a more forgiving driver. It helps. My putter. Yeah, it's, it is. It's the relatability of it where it's, I mean, again, Rory is Rory. So you got to have him in there and it's cool to see the clubs that he's using, but you're probably, if you're 98% of the population, you're probably going to be using the clubs that I'm using it's, or that Frankie's using or that Riggs is using. It's a weird sport because it's like people, I've always said this about go- golf and sex are two things people just expect to be good at. And they really have no business being good at either of them. That's true. You expect to just be able to have sex like a porn star and golf like a golfer, and it makes no sense to me. Both of these things are wildly hard. They're and very so intricate, difficult, right? Very much. So, like, you don't. Nobody puts on like Jordans and is like, "I'm gonna play like Michael Jordan." It's like I like the way they look. I look like him, but they don't expect like play like him. Uh, golf is one where it's like you're on the same course, you're doing the same things, and like these golf clubs will affect your play. And I don't know. It's just an interesting. I, I don't even know if they thought of it that far or if they were just like. These guys are on the internet every day, and we're going to get a lot of exposure. But I think that that deal works in a lot of different ways and for yeah, all parties involved. They ended up set, it ended up setting like setting the market to a degree. Like Callaway signed all these people. Like Did all they? the club companies, the oh, dominoes man, started to I fall. Where that. all these YouTube brands that are that are on there with us all have these club deals now. So it's listen. You never want to be honestly like you never want to be the people who are like we were first, so we need like that doesn't end up getting you anywhere. That doesn't the credit that you think you deserve. Yeah. That doesn't translate to people being like, oh, I like those guys. You you still have to put out great content. Yep. You still have to be interesting. You still got to think of good ideas. As much as you want to be like, oh yeah, no, yeah, that was us first, and that's why everybody's doing it now. Well, that doesn't the, end up getting you anywhere. The yeah. worst thing is to be too. If you're, you could be too early. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that really sucks when it's like, oh, I was doing that and there just wasn't a market for it. Right. And then you weren't doing it at the right time. I think, you know, being first is one of those things you don't want to – you want other people to say it about you. You don't want to be the guys being like, well, actually, we were first. You know? Right. But you're right. There, there's – it's like if you're not still doing it, who cares that you did it, you know, five years ago, six years ago, ten years ago, if you're not still doing it today. And the fact that you guys are doing it on the level you're at. I, so I guess YouTube golf is kind of a thing, like a phrase that I'm hearing. Very much so. Right. Yeah. So, and they were saying, like, Tiger Woods has never done any yeah. YouTube golf until this. Like, that is 
some resume type shit. If it, maybe you don't care about that, whatever. But I think being like we were the ones that got the greatest of all time to dip into this world. Like we married Tiger and the internet, I think is like I, – I think it's the best, the biggest content achievement at Barstool. That's I appreciate that. What we the way we look at it is, I, I'm sure there's people out there who are seeing the video who are like, oh, they're tailor-made athletes. Tiger's a tailor-made guy, so that makes sense that he would do a video with them. But what it really is for us is it's it's been seven years of circling this guy and sort of doing the right things, kind of being state-run media for Tiger Woods. Yeah, where everything, with North Korea, let's go. We baby. are. Yeah. I th- I think that's something that it, uh, is missed by people. We're like Tiger's beloved now. When you guys started, he was, not he, not that he wasn't beloved, but like at least in in this office, and then like yeah. and there were definitely parts of the end that were like he's done, and he's contra- I, he was controversial, somewhat hated by certain people, and definitely thought of as done. Well, yeah. he was ba- yeah he was barely barely playing. Obviously, hadn't won the 2019 Masters yet. We were in the abyss with him, where he had won the 2008 U.S. Open, and then it was he hadn't won a major in you know 10 years, and you're like holy shit. We're, but we're just going to defend this guy because we think it's going to happen. We put all of our chips you have to. on down and being like, he's going to win again. And thankfully he did. And yeah, it, was, it wasn't, I mean, Tiger is so transcendent and such a huge star that he was always going to have fans, but it was certainly on the back end. It was the back, yeah. It yeah. Was, I, I'm not trying to paint it worse than it was. Like, he wasn't disliked. And it really, maybe my mind is just remembering The Office. But yeah, I, remember, it's, it's, I remember it's, going it's, to sit with yeah. you two. You two were watching in the recliners in the old office. Mm-hmm. And... It was so over the top of people being like, he's not, he's done. And I could see like Riggs, I think, getting like actually mad. And I was like, <laughs> I'm just going to go sit with them and watch t- and, and like be a Tiger guy because like it felt like no one else I was remember a Tiger being, guy. I think, on radio, like, like say it, say he's done. <laughs> say it. You guys are stupid. <laughs> You're wrong. And they wouldn't do it. And, and it paid off. So there was that part of and it. I'm and sure then- he like took note at some point or, yeah. you know, or, or somebody, somebody's at. in his ear being like, you know, maybe you haven't watched Barstool Radio recently, Tiger, but I can tell you that these three guys were like the ones championing you at the at your worst, at your lowest. So, so that's what it was, and I, I, like I, I don't think Tiger's paying attention, but his guys, that's kind of their job is yeah, to like totally. know what's going on. And so we kind of would circle their inner circle at these tournaments where it's like we've got nowadays we've gotten very close with Joy LaCava, who was his ex caddy, but was his caddy through all this stuff. We've like we play golf with them, we get drinks with them, like getting close to the people around him was important. And it sounds crazy, but like that was kind of the job. It was like you're never gonna just get Tiger. You got to get around him a little bit, make people feel comfortable. They're like we trust these guys. Like we're not these guys aren't trying to fuck you over. Think about Tiger's life. Tiger has lived the most interesting life probably of all time. People fucked him over. It's been it's been a wild ride for him. So he kind of probably just wants people around. Who he knows aren't going to fuck nice him over. Him. Who yeah. are nice, and that was us. We were, at, you know, we met him for the first time at Pebble. That was a huge deal, and that was if you watch that's the video you, back. That's where you stationed. That video? That's where you stationed. Yeah. Incredible. If you watch the video back, you can see right at the very beginning. Joy Lacava points over to us and goes, "Those, Those are your guys." guys. Mm-hmm. Ti- again, Tiger's just Tiger's Tiger, man. Yeah. We're still talking about Tiger Woods. Yeah. This <laughs> that, guy that, just can do whatever he wants all the time. Certainly does not have to talk to a bunch of podcasts. No, yeah. could I, blow right by us, and it would make the most sense in the world. And, and so you'd to ha- still go, whoa, Tiger just walked by us. Yeah, Tiger, Tiger lifted yeah. his leg and pissed on us. So, yeah. so like, to have <laughs> Joey Lacava and then his right-hand man is this guy, Robbie Mack, who goes everywhere with him. If you now see Tiger nowadays, you see Robbie Mack. And he's just everywhere with him. He's his best friend. He's all these different roles. So we kind of got close with those guys. And it's been seven years we've been doing that. State-run media, get around him, be like good to his people. Basically, just be like, we're Tiger guys. I get that we're media. That's sort of the funnel we get put in because we have a podcast. We're on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. But we're really just huge Tiger guys. Right. And we just want to like get close to him and get near him and do videos with him and be a part of his world. And it took six, seven years. And then Taylor made the deal. That helps. And everyone at Taylor made has been so good about like, we've been floating. Like we want to get Tiger. Like literally give us two minutes with him. That it's going to make our whole entire year. So this Taylor made media day, this last one in October, they gave us time with him. And that's the video that came out of that. But it's been a longer track than people probably think. And I'm not expecting people, the people who see that video to understand that, but we know that it's like, this is a big accomplishment for us because it has it's been a long road. Yeah. Also, there's for, for every person, I'm sure at times, like all you do is dick ride Tiger. How come you never criticize him? How come you're, you're always positive about him? And it's like, I'm not here to be the fucking like, journalist police of golf. I no. like Tiger, 
and look how much it paid off. Now he, you know, now he's hitting drive out driving us from his <laughs> knees and fucking we have, you know get a billion views and we're you know making a video with golf's greatest one of sports' greatest figures and it's because we decided to just not like jump on on it you know jump on his back when he fucking crashes his car or gets caught with this or does that whatever you know we just we just rode for the guy and now it paid off so and, and that's the beauty of this place right where it's you can do that we are not there's no expectation of journalism right. Right. it's actually the opposite like we've all been here long enough we were talking about it where that wasn't even a part of it it was right. all just find the what funniest do you like? thing what, do and, yeah. what do you like and find the funniest thing write about it tweet about it whatever and like i said when you sort of Barstool has adapted in a way where you start to go into these different avenues where you get into a world where the expectation is journalism. And we're like, no, 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 we're still not going to do that. We have a big enough platform and we're in these worlds, but we're still just going to act like fans. Totally. And, and people That's, turn up their nose I, to that. I, I, and why, why would you stop? That's what's working. We That's went why to we war here, you know? years ago. We went to war with old man media. We Ugh. At the President's Cup in Australia, we shook Tiger's hand and we were giddy schoolgirls after and the whole, the whole old guard was like, this is so embarrassing. All they do is make it about themselves. And we were like, we do different jobs. And yeah, by the way, there's yeah. a place at the table for everybody. Yeah. You guys can still do your long pieces, very serious journalism. But you got to understand that there is a new world and we are in that world. And we're not going to change just because you guys want to type with a typewriter. Like we are going to do Whoa. what we want. And it and it and people like it. And, there's and, a market for it. I it think was, this was also like the nail on the coffin. Like. You you guys won that war a long time ago. Yeah, but there's always a way for them to wiggle out of it. You know, like they didn't do like oh sure whatever they you know their podcast succeeds, but they don't do this, so they don't do yeah. that. And eventually, it's like we've checked every box. We we make money. We've been invited to this. We're signed by Taylor Made. Da, 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 and also we are are making content with the greatest ever do it. Yeah, I mean it's what's left. You know, <laughs> like you guys should probably fucking retire. Yeah, no, it's it feels good. Except it, I'm sure there's just. So much money rolling in. I go, how, how you doing I, these days, Big Daddy? I'm all right. <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I don't know. It, it, but golf is such an interesting sport. And you, always, John, you always tell the story about how early days, Barcelona, you would get emails from people being like, "Make a golf towel, know, make a this and uh, that." And you guys, I would laugh. We'd yell at each other and laugh. Got another one. Those fucking. I don't runs. understand the logic of not. Yeah, doing it. and. Everybody golfs, yeah. and it just a lot of people if buy I, merch, I, I, and it's. I, I go back in my head. I'm like, if I gambled, would have been a better career. I golfed <laughs> would have been a better career. All these things that like most guys do. I just those I don't have that vice. Don't care for that sport. Fuck. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. And this uh, Barstool, the platform is so crazy and so mm -hmm. great, and like. It's a little bit of both. Like we've obviously worked so hard, and but Barcelona's got this huge audience. It's always been that way. It's uh, we just have a thing that people really like. This break is brought to you by Ted on Peacock. It is available streaming now, January 11th. We already talked to you about uh, Ted being the prequel to Ted One and Ted Two. It's the television series now streaming on Peacock. I Ted is hold I hold Ted very near and dear to my heart. Both times my kids were born, we watched Ted in the hospital yes we watched ted one because it was like lighthearted and like the perfect kind of like silliness to you know get through a scary time and then when we were having our second kid ted two had like just come out on dvd <laughs> and i was like it's meant to be we're watching ted and ted two it's the perfect sort of like heartfelt funny it's irreverent so it's funny but it is there is like that family element which is exactly what they're capturing in the new tv show it's set in 1993 so it's a 16 year old hanging out with Ted instead of a grown adult, which honestly makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> um, but he's going to school with John, and he's going to parties with John, and living the life of a 16-year-old kid as everybody's favorite, favorite, you know, horny little fucked up bear. <laughs> it's one of the best inventions, you know, one of the best things Seth, Seth MacFarlane ever came up with is just he convinced the whole world that like a horny bear is. He just does not miss. He doesn't, it's, it's, dude. Like, like oh, I, I remember when this. The trailer first came out for Ted. I was like, what the hell is that? And I saw Ted. And I was like, this is the funniest thing I've ever Laughed seen. Laughed my, my fucking <laughs> dick off, dude. So you can watch it uh, on Peacock. Binge the series. Watch it week to week, however you want to do it. On January 11th, new episode, first episode drops. Sign up on Peacock today. I posed the question to him. Th th rank the th these three points in time, these three moments of importance for Trent. Number one, in no order, getting arrested. Number two, Iowa-Michigan football game to bring him to New York City. Number three, 
the Tiger video. And what I said to him was it's the, the meme of the guy putting the block down. Yeah. Me getting arrested is One the first One shot of Rumpelman's because led to. Because this is so long ago now, and I, I'm sure there's still people from that time who follow, but like, I was hated. I was incredibly disliked on the internet, the, when, on the blog, Trent like was everywhere. Trent was an OG guy where, like, when you started blogging, it was like commenters will decide your fate, and and everybody's gonna. There's the people that fans like, and the people that fans don't like, and it really does not have any rhyme or reason about talent or or funny. It's just like they don't like the way you look, they don't like the way you talk, <laughs> they don't like whatever. And at that point. Trent in Iowa. It was just people were just fucking hating. I was in the barrel, him. man. I was just in it. And, I didn't but, remember but you, you just. Hate, I, I remember it. thinking you were going to get fired for the arrest just, just before, not for the arrest, but before, that day when you were blocked. There's right. nobody blocked. But, but, I, but I didn't but remember. It was prior to that, I didn't remember you being hated. The reason why we thought he was going to get fired is because it was noticeable, and we all were terrified, and we all blogged every day. But Trent blogged every fucking day. Oh yeah, from Iowa, like you know. The, the the whole story, if you don't know it, Trent wanted to sell T-shirts for his like small like local blog. Dave took note that this like random guy just had his own like independent thing going, and so he was like, "Fuck it, like we'll just have this Iowa branch." When meanwhile he was trying to do Philly and and Boston and New York and New Chicago, York, yeah. so Iowa didn't really like fit the bill. But he was like, "Whatever, this guy is doing his thing." And then it became like you know Iowa people hating on Trent and they didn't like him and he didn't deserve the job. <laughs> and then one day, no blog at like 9 a.m., no yeah. blog at 10 a.m., no blog at 1 p.m., no blog at like 4 p.m. Yeah. And we, I think I remember being like, I th- like, did, we, did he just did he just Goodwill hunting it? Did he just, <laughs> did he just disappear? Did he fucking is he you know is something wrong? Is he dead? Did he kill himself? Did someone kill him? It's closer to that. And yeah. then we find <laughs> out, you know, we see the mug shot eventually. I don't even remember how we all eventually found out, but Dave got it first. I'm sure, right? I, I don't know how. I still don't know how he did it. Yeah, I got shit faced at Moose McDuffie's. With my Uncle Jack Uncle off Jack. Rumpelman's. <laughs> St. Lunatics came on. There's the tweet out there that was like, St. Lunatics just came on. I'll see you guys Monday. Because it was a Thursday. <laughs> I was just, yeah, I just got shit-faced literally across the street from my apartment. All you like, needed to do was make like 20 steps. And you oh, yeah. It. It's, it's people who know can't believe how short of a distance it is. Um, yeah, then I got arrested. <laughs> public intox. And then, yeah, Dave got the mugshot first somehow. And I was just like... Fuck, man. I'm sure that's... Did he you know, blog Dave it first or talk to you first? He blogged it. Blogged it right oh, away? Could, oh, yeah. Without Didn't, even talking to you. The fir- so I got... So you obviously don't have your phone when you're in jail. Yeah. So And I was so drunk. You got to blow under... In Lynn County, you got to blow under a certain amount before they let you out. And I was shit-faced, so it took forever. I didn't get out until 6 p.m. the next night. Yeah. <laughs> so, Did you say that, didn't you say you were, like, pretty much fine and the cops were like, like, we, we can't... Sorry, bro. Like, you keep blowing .10 or whatever. Oh, yeah. Just, like, when you're in there... And they were like... It's not like you were, like, sloppy drunk. You're no. just sitting there like, I could go home right now, but they're like, no, you can't. And because- I just wanted my phone because it's yeah. like, at that point, you're like, I have I've been away from my phone for almost 24 hours, yeah. which in our, in our world, at that like time, especially nightmare. It, if it was any other reason, you would have been fired. If it was like I, I was at a party, I was at a wedding, I lost my phone, I got drunk and whatever. Right. Because it became content that was funny, you got fired. I think uh, you got uh, arrested. Yeah. I think Dave was like yeah. cool. So but I, if you like in in those days, if you just like missed a whole day of blogging, maybe not fired, but you would be like in fucking trouble. I opened my phone when I got it, and I had an email from Dave. That said, where are you? Like, why aren't you blogging? And then I, I'm like, I mean, I have the the anxiety and the fear you have, so hungover, getting out of jail, just like I, I, I gotta tell. Shoelaces aren't in. I didn't have my. I lost my glasses. They were gone. From, and it was raining. I live pretty close to downtown in Cedar Rapids at the time, and that's where the jail is. Didn't even call a cab. I was, and it was pouring rain. I was walk like, the rain. I don't deserve a cab. I'm just gonna walk home. <laughs> Like a sad puppy that, and it was bad. So I, I emailed Dave back, like, "Fuck, I got arrested last night." This whole, this whole. You story, told him like, right away. Told him right away. Yeah. yeah. The whole story, blah blah blah. Emails me back immediately and just says, "Make sure you blog it." Yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was the only yeah. thing he said to me. And then I think I blogged it. And he then got the the mug shot and he blogged it. That that is bad. Okay, so you had blogged first that you were arrested. I think and so. Then he blogged the mug I, shot. If I had to guess, I'm thinking the Barcelona network was big enough at that point that like somebody. Sent it to you know somebody as a stoolie yeah, in the yeah, Iowa sure. jail yeah. system. You know what I mean? For sure. But that also was a little bit before. I think maybe, maybe not. I think it was a little bit before we were like a full blown reality show of like our personal lives. You know what I mean? 
So like I mean, Milton like definitely that. was. Yeah, but yeah, but that was like like this, like like KFC. You might have still. Nah, you were Kevin Clancy at that point. Not. I mean, you were still on the blog KFC, but people yeah, knew your that's name. my point. Being like, like 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 a you know a story about like your like Big Cat was not Dan Cat. No, B- Big Cat was still like uh, we were still like debating about being. You know, we were. I think we were doing, um, like Google Hangouts, and his square was like a cartoon of a cat. No, he, we, only, we only did that twice. I, I'm 99 percent sure we did that twice, and then and then, and then he, he, he went. He he's like, face. I'm coming full time. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. So we were like still hiding kind of names and identities, or like personal stories weren't like quite out there. At least not for everybody, you know. Like yeah. maybe Dave. I'm just saying that that you know that probably I probably would have been like, oh man, am I going to be in trouble like with my boss? For getting arrested or not blogging, yeah, and he probably was like, "This is this is what I've always dreamed of yeah. having people getting arrested and people fucking." You know, I probably yeah. would have tried to get away with him not knowing. I was. I probably. Would've, I probably would have gone like hospital. I don't know. Obviously, don't know what I would have done. Yeah, I don't know if I had to come right out and been. But like, but I was now arrested. you would know that like being arrested is like this yeah. is a good thing. That, that's kind of my point. Is like at that point, I don't know how much we knew that like oh like I think about I would love to get arrested for something minor and have a good <laughs> have a good mug shot, get some publicity yeah. out of it, you know. So I, I'm sure at the time you did not think that. I'm sure you're banged up and embarrassed and like, oh my god, what am I doing? But in hindsight, time. in hindsight, that was the first moment. The second moment is he didn't get invited to New York, which that was a big thing. We're moving to New York, and some bloggers were going to come, and some bloggers weren't. And getting left off was like fuck. And that was brutal. I'm sure. I'm sure both you guys had to go through that, right? And you 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 came along. Right? What? The first day was like you you can come if you if you want. I to. came right away, but he before he told me he was like. You don't have to come to New York, and I was like, "Uh, yeah, I do." <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I remember I'm him. Sure, that was crushing. Crushing. Like, I remember fuck. he called me. He was calling everybody and telling everybody. And that, it's so funny going back to that time. It's like, it's you think of it now. It's just part of the history of this company where oh, everybody moved to New York, and like, but we were all just in different places, yeah. mm-hmm. and it was like we're just gonna build this thing, and I don't know where it's gonna go. Everybody moving to New York was a huge deal. Bro, yeah. I remember being like, I'll probably pop into the office here and there, but like, I work from home. You got, like I have my life here already. You guys right. are coming here. Like I'm, I'll be in and out. Like and not realizing that it's like no, this is going to become like a content house. Um, so like er, it was a yeah, a, it was a big a tumultuous deal. time. He called was, me and he told me and I was like, damn. Like I almost didn't even process it in the moment. And then did you think like oh for sure I'm going or like I just thought. I think I did think that I was going to go. Yeah. I just figured we were all going. Yeah. Right. Um, I, w- I was shocked when he was. Like, yeah. Right. And then I, I'm sure there was just at that point like. We, if you know you live in New York, I gotta pay New York rates and prices True. and all that sort of shit. And yeah, he called me and then we hung up. And then like two hours later, I called him back and I was like, I want, I want to come to New York. Like I think this is gonna be a big deal. Yeah. I really want to be a part of it. Still said no. And then yeah, I was just sort of like, well, how long between that and the game? It was a while. Yeah. It was a few months because it was yeah. He, I was in limbo for a while. I remember being like, I'm fucked. Like, so I, then, but really, it was that season, right? Like I remember Dave. He. The talk with me was before he moved to New York, but he moved to New York way before everyone else. He did, did yeah, because we thought the office was gonna be ready. Right. So like he came down to he came and sat in front of me in Milton and was like, but he hadn't moved yet. So he moved in like May, and I think we all moved in August. Okay, and that's I, right. I would guess it was that season towards the end of that season. But I think he told us, I forget when the churn deal broke. That was that, yeah, that, was, that was like May. The other like, thing too about yeah, all this. Right. The time, the way time feels now to the way that f- time felt back then, like the fact that I was in Iowa for three years doing blogging felt like 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I've been in New York for seven and it feels like two years. Yep. Like those first three years for me working longest at Barstool, the, the longest, most stressful, most fun, like most rewarding. But I remember looking back now or I think back now like that was only three years. Bro, because you, we, we worked around – the clock yeah and we were nervous to see the phone ring and miss a story i mean it was like it was the most toxic and like hardcore you know <sighs> version of a of a cushy job obviously for but, sure like, we were that it, those were those were some stressful years and then but yeah iowa wins and what, what yeah. game was that just a, a regular season matchup? A regular a, season game night game at kinnick but michigan was so good that year what, in what, iowa what, what was the spread do you remember I don't even like remember. ballpark. That was it like you know, oh, was it like I don't even seventeen think, points. I don't think Iowa was ranked. I think Michigan yeah. was two or three in the country. So, so I mean, it was. I remember on, you were on Periscope, correct? That was Paris. Uh, yeah, Periscope. Periscope watching Trent watching that field. It was a field goal, right? Winning field yep. goal, go through, and being like Duncan you Keith. Know, he's going to New York. But even better than that was the 
Barstool Idol performance he had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B- comes through the door. The elevator door opens up. We've got one more contestant for Barstool Idol to try to win a contract at Barstool. New, no- New York, New York is playing. Big Daddy Trent walks in with this strut, like fucking uh, like a wrestler coming to the I'm ring. I was so nervous. And he was like, I believe I deserve the Barstool contract. Uh, because I work here already, <laughs> so good. I got to so give you a shout. Your way to the office. Yeah, that because and I was we were talking earlier today, Kevin. But I was saying on the rundown the Monday after the IO game, I think David said on the rundown like I just meant he could come visit. Yeah, I didn't he was say. Still I was out. like fuck. <laughs> so then I got to give a huge shout out to office manager Brett who um, booked my flight from Cedar Rapids to New York on Erica's card without asking her. He was like, you got to come here. You got to come do this. He went rogue. I flew to New York, did the Barcelona Idol thing, and then moved a couple months later. Um, Yeah, the Iowa game, and people ask me all the time, like, would would Dave have really not moved you if Iowa hadn't won that game? And I genuinely think, may have happened later, but maybe not. I think if if you had, like, if you somehow did something else to really earn it, he would have. But, like, if it was just the same thing, I think he would have just been like, no. He's very. He's not like. He doesn't want to fire anybody ever, but he doesn't get like emotional about like giving out extra in no. any way. Like if you if you started golf in Iowa and it worked fine, like then. But I think he would have just been like, no, like you just he's you're good doing Trent's what you're in doing. Iowa, yeah. yeah. So yeah, but I'm, then but then and then so this Tiger thing is more of a moment. Like I, you could probably argue that there's a bigger moment. I would say when you guys were golfing in the snow, foreplay went viral. When you had the tailor made. When you. Uh, like when Frankie joined, there's other moments along the way where you guys probably grew more, but this feels more like a, like a stamp on the, not the end of it. Cause you guys still have so much more to go, but just like, like I said, there's no more argument. There's no more debate. The old guys, you know, the bums have lost the revolution is yeah. over. You guys win. Uh, so I guess you have to wait to see what the reaction is like, but people will know you from this video and people in the golf world. Oh yeah. Like you guys are with, you roll with tiger. Like, so maybe we'll see what the reaction is coming, but I, those to me are like the three moments that I think will be. I agree. Trump's and the, career. I think this will end up being the biggest thing that we certainly have done and who knows where everything goes, but it is all the little breaks, all the little bounces are, are so important, whether it be the, the blizzard, in New York city, where a, a time magazine photographer just happens to be out there. Like that was when things were still people forget too. And, and I give a ton of credit to Riggs for this, where we, it was a battle in the office. Dave, Oh yeah. Like he, golf, he was like golf is not a job. Like the the job is being in the office and blogging and being a part of this thing. We're trying to go to like I remember went to TPC Sawgrass to film a video. Boondoggle. And Dave, that was the start of the Boondoggle Boys. And Dave called us on radio. First thing he said to me was, "No blogs today, Trent." And I felt my fucking heart in my toes, mm-hmm. and I wanted to die because blogging was king still yeah. back then. We we're sort of going to podcasts, and you guys were obviously on the forefront of podcasts. Podcasts were still starting to become a thing, but it was very much be in the office, blog, be a part of this reality. We're in Florida filming a video that I don't even think we ever put out, and Dave's like, what the fuck do you guys think you're doing? Uh, it, it, and Riggs fought that battle almost every day for years, and he was great at it. That, to the point where we finally broke away, started doing more videos, and we got to that point. But going through that fire was a lot. That transitional period of... Like, nowadays, people, we have a list of the top 20 bloggers, I think. Yeah. And I think it's a mix of, like, how many blogs and how many clicks you got and all that. We didn't even do that in our time because it was just known we'd all have, like, a million. Yeah. It was just infinity. Well, I mean, I was... I don't know. You wrote 20, and I wrote 18, and you wrote 12, you wrote 15. It was just, like, there's just... We never had to count because we knew everybody was blogging all the time. So, all of a sudden, the very beginning of alternate media was like, well, now I, you know, he's still doing 15 and you did zero today because yeah. it's like, holy shit. But Dave very much like did not understand the idea of making content like that regularly or the idea of like seasons. Like I'm filming all this and it's going to come out later. Like I think YP kind of got fucked on that where he's like, what are you doing all day? It's like, it, doesn't, it hasn't come out yet. I'm working on it now. Right. Nowadays, all of this stuff is accepted because we basically have become Hollywood. we become entertainment. Some people have TV shows. Some people have seasons. Some people have long form, short form, in the office, out of the office. But at that point, when, you're, when everyone else is still just clicking away and you're like, oh, I golfed today. It was like what the fuck, but I also I think it's kind of crazy. I think you should have the foresight to understand. Like, no, but if at you're the building time, a golf brand, you got to go. At but. the time, Dave was right because we didn't have the brand. It yeah, was just yeah. two guys that he knew as bloggers sure, sure. who were just like, what is this going to become? Like, be in the office because 
And I, it's not like basketball bloggers go play basketball. They just right. fucking, you know. And the, that old office really was cooking, where it was mm-hmm. like, if you're here, things are going to happen, and it's going to mm-hmm. be the best content mm-hmm. we'll ever put out. Just getting yelled at or getting in arguments. That whole, that melting pot of those early New York days were incredible. Yep. So to think that we would like, oh, let's go do these golf videos that were not sponsored at the time, that there was no real foresight, even from us. We were just like, I think we can try this. I and think see you guys kind of were boondoggling. Maybe. I like I were you guys being like, if we stick to this course, we will be a multi million dollar brand one day. No. Or, or was it like not. we could prop like Dave's gonna yell at us, but we could probably get away with this. I don't know. I don't think we were that boondoggling. I think we thought Rig, it was, Riggs might have been a little more boo- like you and Frank, you were always pretty like, I'm i I'm scared of Dave We're still being scared. Mad. Yeah, I mean everybody is but I think Riggs was more like, I don't know, I don't fucking Yeah, know. I don't know. It's I, probably we were a talking bit. earlier if, if if Iowa doesn't win that football game. Riggs doesn't come to New York. Maybe uh, Trent doesn't come to New York. Maybe Riggs never finds his golf partner, and maybe Riggs is just still doing political content, <laughs> and <laughs> all of trenches. his hair is falling Riggs, out, Riggs is and his fel- lace is melting. He's just still talking about Donald Trump eight years later. It's like <laughs> he's two, uh, years, two years divorced from Hope Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I think in the beginning there was a little bit of boondock. Maybe no, we're very uh, even with all that said. Like we still like I get did that it, people probably hate us. There's a certain percentage of people that hate us because our job is golf, which I get. Yeah. There's still a part of me where I'm like, you, think, I, you mean like here or uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. I mean on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still yeah, think you're it's, mad that it's uh, just like, dude. I, I, some of my friends always go like, bro, why isn't it not me? I, I, I honestly told them I was like, I told you guys to do, like, I have a bunch of funny friends. When I first started, I was like, if you guys want to try to get in the mix, like you should do this. And I was like, none of you did it. You, you guys probably could have done it. You didn't. We have worked very hard, but there is an element of luck to all of it. Always. Just even Timing the ori- even the beginning where Dave seeing my email for some reason when I sent him my blog originally from that. Day on, I'm just like I'm just gonna do whatever I can. Think about that. Would Dave Dude. open up an email and take the time to read someone else being like, "I need advice about selling T-shirts for not you, for for myself." That was He'd back. Like, I don't know, that, that was back when it was just a just tips email. It was only a tips yeah. email. It wasn't like whatever Dave's email is now. It didn't go right to him. It yeah. was sending to you guys in Boston, being like, "Oh, is this a tip for a story?" I remember I the only like logical thing that I did, I think it was smart, was I put T-shirt question as the subject of the email, and T-shirts. A merch was world. so important back yeah. then; it still is very yeah. important. I figured, Dave, if he's going to click on one, it would be like, "Oh, this guy, he wants a T-shirt. Welk or fuck something <laughs> up." Like, <laughs> but then he read it, and he, I remember he was in uh-huh. Turks and Caicos. He was like. I think that's where he was. He used to go there, right? Yeah, he, he definitely went there. He um, he was like, I'm in Turks and Caicos. I read the blog. Like, let's talk on Monday. And just that, like, from then on out, it's like, it's it's hard work, but it's a lot of luck. Were you like, oh my what? god, dude. I, thought, I was I, just asking for like, a, I, like a, I was a huge, huge Barcel fan, yeah. huge fan of you guys. Yeah, like, it's, it's it's weird when you read it for fun re- and then. It's like, wait a minute, now I'm going to do it? I remember when I got hired and you on KC Radio with Super Producer BC were talking about, like, we, well, we hired this guy, Milmore, who was great, is great, but he was making those cartoons at the time. And you're like, well, this guy is going to be. Barstool Shorts, yeah. Barstool Shorts. Milmore is incredible. And then we got this fucking guy, Trent, from Iowa. And I was like, my life is is becoming far more different than I am. <laughs> and it, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah it was. You and were doing from security, then on, right? when I, what's that? You were doing security or something? I was a security guy. I was listening yeah. to your podcast in the guard shack. Like, Crazy. my life is about to change. <laughs> and then, I, I've said it before, but as long as I can pay rent, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I really don't. We, we all cited that. Like, uh, so the question was kind of like, what moment in your career, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, once I knew I can do this for a job, once I got like $50,000 a year, and I was like, I don't know what else might come of it. Maybe nothing. But if I can just keep doing this and I don't have to go back to that, I'm happy. Because here's the thing. The rest is icing on the cake. I'm really just a guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it works. I'm just a guy. But, that, We're but, all, but you're just a guy to an extent. Like, I, 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 believe, I agree but your, 100%. You, but, you, like, you, knowing you, you're not just a guy. But, no, no, no. It, it's like in our I know a lot heart, of guys. I know like, a lot of in, in, your, in, in our heads, people like us, like, saw the opportunity and ran with it. Or, like, even didn't consciously do it, but did it, got lucky, whatever. Yep. Like, there was a little something extra. But at heart, we're just, like, we are just dudes. No, I, I, do, I agree like, with like, that. Like, 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 if this disappeared somehow, I think we would be, like, the three of us would be, like, I don't know, uh, well, I don't know, you want to watch a movie or something? Like, right. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be, like, what? It would just, we're just guys. I'd be, like, oh, we got away with it for so yeah, long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, this should have happened ten years it's, ago. And it's we're really, cre- house money. it's a credit to Dave that Dave is... He's but I don't think Dave is a dude. 
I mean, no, he's I'm, a dude, but like I, I think certain people are like stars, and I think certain people are like we're just we're just dudes. Dave is Dave is meant to be like an icon. Dave is a superstar. Yeah, yeah. Like I I genuinely believe that he was no matter what he did, he was gonna get to this level right. and be this influential and all that shit. But it's a credit to him where I all the other like I have no college education. I have none of that. I don't have a degree. And if you were probably starting a media company at that time, like there were people doing it, you had to go, you had to have a right, you had to yeah, have a journalism whatever, degree. Whatever, you had yeah. to, Dave was always looking for funny people, and that was mm -hmm. it. Didn't matter what your credentials were. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a big part of like why this place is so different. It's a huge part of it. Did you have a moment with Dave where the boondoggle shit stopped and he was like, Okay, this is legit, or like did he just stop? bothering you did you ever have a moment where he was like wow foreplay is fucking killing it no we never had it that was, moment it was just like <laughs> he just, i'll leave you alone now. he kind of leaves I you i will alone. stop terrorizing you when you're out of the office I, i'm 10 years in he'll, i'm still scared of the hammer and he'll still bring it <laughs> he's not afraid to still bring but what, it i mean over, over what what was the last time you brought the hammer on you guys for what oh it's not even like it's, like, it's, it's not even it's like, like a real thing or thing or something but Maybe. it's never it's never going to be like you guys have I, carte blanche for the rest of your life to do whatever you want with content now uh, I guess I, but I also work. What, 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 what? I've also worked very closely with a guy who was Dave's right hand guy for se six or seven years, who has the most anxiety about it ever. Uh, so I sort of we I both feed that. into yeah. each other, and I think it's a smart way to do it. Like I think still having yeah, that fear to a degree. For yeah, sure. I mean, I I, I, yeah. I remember we I, all still do too. Yeah, <laughs> I was with you guys the day they brought the company back, and we were golfing. Yep. And the fear, and it, cause like, I think the day started with it might even have been Frankie, where I think I call. I, I knew we were golfing that day, and I think I called Frankie. I forget exactly how it went down, and I was like, "Yo, yeah, so like, it, Dave, you were doing the video with Frankie, yeah, right, right, right. And, and, and like, you, you were Frankie about, wanted like, to cancel it, right? You guys were talking about well, Frankie wanted to cancel. I no, don't no, 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 no. You, you, we, we were talking. I, like, I think you guys should you be wanted, in the office. That's right. yeah. And Frankie was like, "This is the only time we can film this yeah, one." It thing. was you. That's yeah, right. And I, I was surprised by Frankie too. in the morning on the phone call. Where I was like, "He wants to do this still." I, I thought Frankie would be so scared. And then we get there, and I don't know if maybe Frankie didn't process everything on the phone call. And then he was like, <laughs> "Oh fuck, we have to get this." <laughs> hey, yeah, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And then you and I taking the train. We took the train in. together. Yeah. We're talking about it. like this is crazy. Yeah. Oh, the fear is yeah. The fear is always going to be there. And I think I think that's an essential part of this place. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think, and I yeah, there's there's a. Uh, if you can, there's a lot of like a lot of lines of delineation of like where you are as a blogger. It's like, where you in Milton? Where you pre churnin Where you pre Erica? Where you you know all these different things. Yeah, I think it comes down to: Are you afraid of Dave or are you not? I like in terms of will you have success here or not? No, just like which which boat are you in? If, oh, if we had to just like divide this up and we're gonna do one giant contest or something, right? And it's like, what do we, how, how, what's a way we could divide it up? It would be like, who are all the guys who just have like a deep rooted, can't shake it, need therapy, oh, fear of danger? I'm a pre churning boy. Like, like, I'm scared. The other day, uh, I was watching some some content. It was like a clip of Grace and Brianna. Uh, I was, I was doing that. Grace and Brianna, <laughs> and they were like talking about Dave, and they're like, let's just call him and like figure it out. And they were like, yo, Dave, why'd you do that? And I was like. I, yeah, I would I, never dream to do that. I don't know. Never. If, if I if it was on, I think we were just talking. I don't think it was on radio when I was uh, hunting with Sydney, Ed, and the Don. We were driving back to the airport after hunting, and I was talking about a text Dave sent me or something like that. And uh, Sydney was, "How do you? How do you?" Uh, I'm like, oh no, we're talking about how Dave sends emails with just. Subject, subject text, and no, it. no bond. And Donnie was like, he's like, oh, I got one of those ones, blah, blah, blah. And Sydney was like, wait, how do you communicate with Dave? And we're like, we don't really. But when we do, it's he sends a subject line email, and that's yep. about it. How, how do you communicate with Dave? She's like, I just FaceTime him. <gasps> we were like, what? <laughs> you just FaceTime I did not know that was coming. <laughs> not in a million years, but I thought she was going to say phone call. <laughs> FaceTime yeah. him? Hey Dave, <laughs> got a minute? No. <laughs> no, I mean like you have to put a gun in my head. No, we do let that... our contracts expire here <laughs> before we, we talk. We to almost him. did that too. <laughs> we are pretty Dude. close. And there's also a part of it where he is a pretty like in terms of like communication like that. He's probably more normal than we're letting on. We're just scared of him. Like I yeah. think if you like, oh. I'm especially you, Kevin, and probably you too, probably all of us. If we called him, he would pick up and be like, "What's up?" I was yeah. gonna say actually, in the last like month, I've had a few phone calls with him. And Very normal. Aside from anything like 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 
it's just been it's been a nice talk. Every no, time. it's like it's like I don't know. You know, eventually your abusive dad stops hitting you. <laughs> and then, and then every just, like, and he's just we, nice to you. We were like laughing at some point. I was like, me and Dave was on the phone laughing <laughs> right now. This is crazy. <laughs> What's laughing? This is the guy who he'll like every once in a while he'll like he'll get a t- he'll text Frankie or Austin will text Frankie because Frankie still has the passwords to a tick his TikTok or something. We we've pulled over probably ten cars, being like, we got to figure this out. Like, <laughs> yeah. text comes in, pull the car over, let's figure this if thing. Frankie out. is. A, there's levels to being like nervous around Dave and Frankie's at the highest of levels where he like he will agonize over every word of the text. He was in that world for so long and so, so long. close to it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, and that's he was part great of at Frank- that's- I'm so happy Frankie joined and like anytime Frankie's on this show, the downloads are up and I think he rips it and I'm like, yeah. bro. If golf forever, whatever reason stops, like you got a home over here because you are a great shoot the shit. He's podcaster. a great storyteller. He gets loves, he he loves gets, the uh, hypotheticals and the he loves the the, the pageantry of like yeah. being in content. He's yeah. also a lot like me. Like I saw him say the uh, his tweet was like, I know that I say everything is crazy and awesome and the best, but this video with Tiger is fucking crazy. Yeah. like he's like me in that sense of like we everything we we're always hyperbole. It's always hundred percent the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh my god, I almost killed myself. This is but that's just my way of saying whether I like something is good or bad or you know. And he's that way. And I think it's just like an energy that he brings. He's always like, Are you? fucking serious yeah. or you know or saying you know crazy shit like he needs the squeegee on the floor like he's just always <laughs> on another level i'm no, very he happy is. he found a home because i mean working under dave is good because you go to these you make money and you go to these things you go to these events and you fly on private jets but eventually it will kill you yeah he i mean it was obviously probably the most stressful Austin, thing by the way handles it better than anyone yeah, Austin's kind of a robot. Yeah. I've noticed he's just he's very just like very yeah. even. Yeah. yeah, very even all yep. the time. Yep, um, I think that's what you got to do. He can't definitely can't be emotional like Frankie to do it. But I remember him agonizing like I think I, I think I have like a thing going on with foreplay, but like I can't leave Dave, can I? And like I think Dave was actually pretty cool about it in the in the end. Yeah, I'm it, sure it wasn't easy, but I think he was. No. it was better than Frankie expected. It took it took probably longer than Frankie thought it was going to to like break It'll away. Be fully done. Um, and Frankie introduced like Austin to that world and kind of. They were both doing it, and then Frankie finally passed it over to Austin. So he, Frankie did it in a smart way, but yeah, I know. I'm we're obviously thrilled that he's with us. He's yeah. he's just he's as much a part of it as me and Riggs are. Everything we talked about today, everything is brought to you by Ted. Ted is the TV show of everyone's favorite ridiculous Ted and Ted Two movies. I mean, when those came out, it was one of those things where I, I thought it was a joke. I was like, this can't be a real movie. Yeah, and I was like, is it is it real? Is it is it a cartoon? Oh, no, wait. There's real people in it. Oh, hang on. They're cursing. One's wait, Mark Wahlberg. Fucking, <laughs> Mark Wahlberg's in it. Uh, One's Mila Kunis. What I, the heck? I, I love that there was probably some, like, you know, Hollywood execs who were like, this is stupid. And they passed on Ted 1. And they were like, fuck. And then someone missed out on Ted 2. And now there's a TV series. The fact that Seth MacFarlane, who's had so much success on a million other things, but has made sure that this horny teddy bear... And this fucking like violent fucked up little teddy bear has a a two movies and a TV series is like his you know his lasting impact. It's unbelievable. So Ted takes place in 1993. John Bennett is the 16 year old kid. He goes to school with him and does everything. You know, Giovanni Ribisi's in it. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like it. Uh, no, Giovanni Ribisi's the bad guy in the first one. Oh, but I'm saying the kid. Oh, I thought the kid in this looks like. Oh, Rubisi. I can see that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Rabisi, yeah. I, I was when I did the Mark Wahlberg, Mila Kunis. I was yeah, trying to see who else in the movie. I forgot. Rabisi doing the funniest <laughs> dance in front of the TV, TV when he's just like wagging his hips, drinking a juice box, and Ted's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Many more moments like that to come on Ted the TV Show, streaming on Peacock, January 11th. Sign up only on Peacock today. And so now you just do this forever, right? I, I mean, guess. who knows what happens? Like maybe. Maybe Barstool implodes one day, something happens. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe the PGA Tour comes along and offers you some godfather thing that you can't refuse. Whatever. You never know what's going to happen in the future. But what we do know is you could just do this until you die. That's a cool thing to be able to – There's that's a level of security. I'm sure you don't appreciate it because, like we just said, we're always still yeah. like, nervous. But you guys make enough money and are successful enough and are continuing only to rise that – I think a you'll be able to literally do this until you decide not to or die, and b I almost think there's a you know you kind of probably have already done it, but like foreplay almost becomes bigger than Barstool in a way where it's just like it's its own thing where 
especially as as Barstool co- goes on and kind of we don't know where we're going. Is Dave in the mix? Is he in? Is he is he not? And 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 what is Barstool without Dave? All these different things. You guys are set as foreplay forever. But we do want to be here. Like Dave buying the company back was a big deal. Like yeah. I, I really. I just, I mean, I moved back in the city basically because of that. Because yeah. I was like, I want to be in the office more. In it did mix. feel like before everyone was very much going off, even more so into their own things, where it was like, this is PMT, this is foreplay, this is chicks, this is KFC Radio, where there was the, the familial part of it kind of went away. And then when he bought it back, I was like, oh, I want to be, I want to be around all these guys. Yeah. Like I still, I wanted to be, but it felt like you should definitely always be focusing on your brand, and we still do that. But when we're not traveling, like I like being here. And if yep. being a part – I've always loved from the very beginning, even when we were all in different places, being a part of Barstool Sports. Yeah. I've always loved that. And, I like, again, Dave hiring me. I'm not, I would have never gotten hired anywhere else that, that's in another, that way. That's another delineation. It's like are you – when you got signed to Barstool, are you, like, excited about that? Or are you just thinking about, like, your career and what – like, okay, this is good for me. I'm going to make some money. I'm going to grow. Or are you like, fuck yeah, I want to be here. And I think that that's an, an important thing to feel because you can't – you can make a lot of money and all yeah. that shit, but you, do you want to be here or do you view it as like a stepping stone or a, a means to an end or whatever? This is the best place to work as a content mm-hmm. creator. Like I, there's yeah. just no micromanaging. There's none of that. It's like if it works, it works. Mm-hmm. Keep doing it. And if it doesn't work, Find maybe else. Dave's going to yell at you and then it right. starts to work. Right, <laughs> right. Like, you, you it really – it's it's yeah. the best place. So, yeah, I mean I'm, I'm thrilled. I, again, I feel very lucky that we've built this thing, but it's – I mean – I want to be a Barstool forever. Last thing before I let you go, because I'm sure you want to get on radio. Um, you also just have this separate world where you can just travel the country and walk out on stage with chicks in the office and have, like, thousands of chicks just go bananas for you. That's a sur- that's probably the most surreal part of it. That's got to be the best little side gig, mm-hmm. like, in the world. It's great. and shout They out just Rhea. go bananas for you. Yeah. I mean, Rhea and Fran, are, they're so great. They, like... They're just like, do you want to come to the stop? I'm like, absolutely. What are the after parties like for Big Daddy Trent at Chicks in the Office events? What are the? I'm a, I'm also still kind of like, I just want to go back to my hotel room. <laughs> 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 but, but honestly, speaking of, I actually want to bring this up to you on radio because I was talking to Frankie about it. I texted you yesterday about a TV. Yeah. I have the, so I moved in. I moved back into the city to a much smaller apartment. My Long Island apartment was much bigger, and I bought a huge TV when I was out on Long Island. It's probably the size of that. Right? It's huge, just seventy-seven inches. Yep. It's huge, and I, but I moved back into the city. And now my apartment is so much smaller that I feel like I'm on the front row at a movie theater every time I watch TV. I offered that TV up to you, and you accepted it. And then I mentioned it to Frankie, and now Frankie wants it. Okay. So you guys, <laughs> yeah. is that all right? Yeah, I, I said to him, I will take this off your hands, but it feels a little silly giving it to me. I don't think I'm really, like, top of the list needing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if someone else wants it, maybe, maybe, yes, it's totally fine, but maybe say no. Casey okay, said he fucking wants it. And we'll, he, and we'll just fuck with Frankie a little bit. Well, the th- uh, thing is, I think he's coming to get it, like, today. Okay. <laughs> he was like, because like, I, li- I told everybody about this except Frankie. I don't know why I didn't even mention it to him, but I'm like, my TV's too big, which, again, champagne problems, but it is too fucking big. I got to get rid of this thing. And then as soon as I mentioned it to him, he's like, I'll be there today. Good. I didn't really want to take it anyway. So. Okay. I was gonna. I was gonna drive. I was like, I bring my car to the city. If you're asking, me, do I want a fucking movie screen? I'll take it. But, <laughs> uh, but yes, you can give it to Frank. Okay. Frank's right. gonna take it. Um, Trent Ryan, everybody. I appreciate having me legend. on. Legend. Yeah. Thank man. you, brother. You want to run out and do some uh, radio before they? Yeah, I think I probably should. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for having me. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Click that button, or I'll cut off my finger. <laughs> <laughs>